Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here today, and I pray that you're having a fantastic day. I am. God is good, and he's worthy to be praised, and uh, as I was getting ready to go on, I was just thinking to myself, saying uh, in my mind, as, as Brother Gary and I was discussing some of the things that's going on in the world today, I'm glad that I'm saved, and I'm sanctified, I'm Holy Ghost filled, and I, I'm fire baptized. I'm glad I know who Jesus is, and I'm glad that I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Because my friends, I tell you, you got to know Jesus. You got to know Jesus in order to keep your joy, and check this out, and, and in order to keep your sanity in times like these. I have never seen uh, 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 things like we're seeing today. Now, for those of you who just, uh, I, I just want, I, I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to, I'm going to go there as I do this promo, inviting you to church. But I'm going to go there. I guess you're proud of the uh, Biden administration. I guess you're proud of uh, of uh, Merrick Garland and how they sued the state of Texas. And for now, for now, they have put a halt on the Texas abortion law that outlawed abortions, aborting babies, when the baby's heart began to beat. In the sixth week, the heart begins to beat. The heart. The heart. Now, the wicked opponents of the law says, you know, the average woman don't know that she's pregnant in six weeks. And I've seen women after women, even elected officials uh, in Congress, which... I was so embarrassed, and I'm saying to myself, God, why did they have to be black? Why would you, an elected official to Congress, go on record uh, making public what you claim to be your most difficult and hard decision that you had to make, which was the decision to kill the perfectly healthy baby born in you. And based on your testimonies, I didn't hear anybody say that they were raped. I didn't hear anybody say that they were pregnant for their daddy. I didn't hear anybody say that the child was sick. But no, you needed to go on with your life. You need to live a fuller life. You need to reach your personal goals. So you know what you did? You offered your baby to Molech the God of convenience, and you now are an elected official in the halls of Congress, and you use that platform, that platform to justify and to speak out against a law that saved little unborn boys and girls, babies, babies, and you women who did this. Do you give any thought? To the, to the fact that you're condemning not just little boys in the womb, but little girls in the womb. Do those little girl babies, those female babies, do they have rights? Uh, should not they be considered? Um, if, if you just hate men and you just, just have no feelings for the guys, then what about the little girls? Oh, this is a wicked time. And so they've halted the law, and there are those who will, with a straight face, celebrate the halting of the law. And I'm not going to even talk about the preachers who actually uh, posted it and went online and said to, said to the people of Texas, shame on you, shame on you, because you are forcing women to have to ha who have been raped to have to have abortions. I guess that preacher don't, don't know that 98% of the abortions performed in this country have nothing to do with rape or incest or anything like that. A full 98%. The overwhelming majority of abortions are performed because the child is a nuisance. The baby is not wanted. She wasn't married to the guy that she had sex with. Or he don't want the baby. Uh, let me tell you something, men. It, it, it's been determined that 81% of the time, if you would just support the child, if men, if we would support the child, the mother would give birth. So you, get, you got preachers who would say to the whole state of Texas, 
the people of Texas, shame on you for saving babies' lives. Oh, God help us. And we, we get all blown out of shape at times when the weather is bad, when uh, a disaster strikes, when tornadoes happen, when, when we have uh, uh, these mishaps of nature. And I heard someone say one time after a storm had come through and just blown away a community and, and they asked me, said, Reverend, what do you think about the, uh, the, the, the storm, the hurricane, whatever? My response was, I'm surprised that they don't happen more often than they do. When you consider how wicked uh, we can be and how we can just uh, uh, turn a deaf ear to the laws of God, the morals of God, the ways of God, it's amazing to me that the God of the Bible in his goodness, kindness, and tender mercy doesn't allow storms and major hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes every day. If we got what we deserved and if God was fair, hallelujah, these things would just wipe us out every day. But thank God the Lord is merciful. He's had mercy on me. He's had mercy on you. And I thank the Lord for his mercy. But I tell you, I am mourning what this, uh, what this judge did. And uh, I hate to mention it, but you know, I tell you whose administration, you know, we, we called him racist and that he, he full, of, full of hatred and all of that. And we talked about, you talked about uh, Donald Trump uh, and, and, and preachers uh, would go online and have a hissy fit uh, talking about Trump, uh, President Trump. But I wonder where those same preachers when it comes to saving little babies. Uh, why aren't you acting out and, 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 and squirming in your seat. And why aren't you about to cuss when it comes to the lives of the unborn? There is something wrong. Where are the voices? Where are the voices? I'm, I'm speaking specifically in the black community because we know that the overwhelming number of babies in Texas whose lives were saved by this law well, black and brown babies, we know that any time an abortion law is uh, restricted and is uh, uh, is uh, 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 and ch changes take place, it affects our ability as people of color. It helps us because more of us are born. So I, I don't get it. I don't get it for the life of me. I don't see it. And, uh, and many read the Bible, carry the Bible, uh, know what the scripture says, know that the killing of the shedding of innocent blood was the major sin why God sent Israel into 70 years of bondage. The, 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 the shedding of innocent blood ran, ran in the streets of Jerusalem and God said that this was a sin that God would not pardon. And, 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 and yet here we are today, the same thing is going on. And you saw last week where women was marching all over the uh, country. Now, did you notice that the crowds weren't, were not as big? They were not as big as they have been in times past. And women out there, and I don't want to make this a racial thing. I don't want to make it a black or white thing. Uh, I, I tell you what I won't do. I won't make it a racist thing, but I will make it racial. I'm amazed at any uh, woman of color. I feel, I feel bad if it's any woman. But when you understand how abortion disproportionately affects African Americans, we make up 13% of the population. Our women make up 8% of the population. Our ovulating women make up perhaps 3 to 4% of the population. And yet we're responsible for almost 39 to 40% of the nation's abortions. Now, how can you claim to be woke and love yourself and love your own and hate racism and uh, you're for the black community? How can you call yourself a lover of your own people 
and you're out there begging, keep the laws in place so that we can kill our own. Abortion kills more African Americans annually than the other all the other leading ten causes of death combined. We need to pray. And, uh, and, and need to stand our ground. And I didn't mean to talk uh, this long about this, but I needed to say something because let me tell you, let me tell you, there is a God and he's watching. He sits high and he looks low and he is a God of mercy. He is a God of grace. Praise the Lord. He loves us, but he's a God of judgment and he cares about those, though he hears, let me rephrase this. He hears the silent screams of those beautiful little babies in the womb. I did a monologue. Uh, Brother Gary's going to put it out there uh, this past uh, Sunday. And I talked about uh, Mo Lake. I talked about parents holding their babies and walking them through the fire and sacrificing their young to this false god so that they could obtain favor. You know, favor. So they can go on and go to college. So they can live their lives, so they can go, go, so that they can become actors and actresses, so that he can go on and not have to drop out of school to pay for a child, and uh, he makes it to the NBA or the NFL or whatever the case may be, and they go on and live their lives at the expense of the only person that was truly innocent in their lives. God's a forgiving God, and if you've repented, God is forgiving you. I'm not after anybody's past, but I am, I am in this fight to save the next child. We've all, we're all forgiven. We're, we're all, we've all been washed in the blood of the lamb. Nobody's so squeaky clean that they can uh, point their finger at someone else and, and say, I condemn you, even though the preacher did post and point his finger at Texas for saving unborn babies and say, shame on you. But I'm telling you, this slaughter of the unborn, and especially if you look like me, if you're my color, if you're white, it doesn't matter, but I want to say to black people, my people, people who look like me, you, you can't, you can't be thinking. You can't be thinking. You can't be using your brain and then say, I support a woman's right to choose when you see how this thing is destroying us as a people. And uh, we've been 13% of the population all my life. Maybe one day you'll stop and ask yourself, I wonder why we can never grow beyond the 13%. Then when you run the numbers and you see the greatest killer of us, and you see that it is by far abortion, maybe it'll dawn on you. Maybe you will wake up. Right now, maybe you're woke, but I'm finding that the woke folk are the ones who are fast asleep. <laughs> yeah, I said it. No, you need to wake up to the truth of God, wake up to the truth of the scriptures, and then walk in the light. Now, I got to go. I got off a little bit. I got off talking about this, but as you know, I'm passionate about it. And so are many of you. And then there are those who will watch this and say, you don't see what the big deal is. But I tell you what, I tell you what, without argument, without controversy, you're glad that they didn't abort you. You're glad that your mama didn't, didn't practice that right. People who, who are for this wicked procedure I've never met one person who wants that procedure performed on them. I've never met anybody, Gary, who wants to be pulled apart, wants their head pulled off, arm pulled off, and all that. No, nobody wants that. I've never met anybody who wants to be dipped in a saline solution that will cause them to disintegrate. No, I'm, and, and I've never met anybody who wants that. And yet there are people out there who march for this, for, for this to be performed on the least of these, the least of these, the very least of these in society are not the newborn. 
And it's certainly not a grown man who is black and he can't get anywhere or a grown woman or a brother or a sister in college or high school who can't get anywhere and you're bad because you've been studying critical race theory and you're saying that I can't get anywhere. No, 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 no. Yeah, yes, you can. All you got to do is just go to work. Go to work, go to work, work hard, work hard. Everybody, everybody has a sad story. Everybody gets turned down. Everybody loses out at times on things that they should have gained. And that's true regardless of color or uh, sex or, uh, uh, or gender and whatever. But the very least of these are those who have no voice, the unborn. And Jesus said, it is better that a millstone be tied around your neck and you be cast into the sea than to harm the very least of these. Now tonight, I am going to be teaching the word of God and we are going to walk in the scriptures and the Lord is going to bless us real good. Now there are people out there today who are going through some things and it has nothing to do with what I've just talked about. I want to encourage you. I'm going to give a little telltale sign here. I'm going to throw a little tease to keep your trust in the God of the Bible. If the God of the Bible is the object of your trust, then you have the most trustworthy, most reliable, most pow- the most powerful object of your trust in existence. Never fail to trust the God of the Bible because the God of the Bible never fails. Now meet me here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. Yeah, you guessed it. Bible study. Tonight, we are going to walk in the word of the Lord together. God bless you. Thank you for watching.